Are you feeling inadequate because you've got a small one? Are you jealous because of photographers who have a large one? Well, it's not what you've got, it's what you do with it that counts. So don't be jealous any longer. Yes, wild eye photography. I'm going to show you how to get amazing shots with a wide angle lens. So no need to be jealous of photographers with a big one. You can do it yourself, even with your kit lens. So stay tuned and find out. What, what did you think I was talking about? Ooh, nasty. Oh, nasty. wide-angle wildlife um, photography so I'm just going to quickly go over a few things that I'm using for this shoot I'm going to do it at a local pond um, it's going to be quite interesting a little bit different but um, ways you can get some very quirky and fun shots like these all right so um, first of all I've got my Nikon D7100, it's got a battery grip on, there we go. I've got a Yongyo 560TX trigger um, for two Yongyo 560 flash guns, there we go. So I've got two of these bad boys to sit on the other side of my camera, I'll show you how that's going to be set up in a minute. I've got a cheap cable release which is about £8, I've just got that brand new again. Um, I've got a circular polarizer because we're going to be taking pictures on a local pond with water. I want to try and, you know, see if we don't think we have any reflections, uh, either reduce or increase the reflections or increase the colour of the sky. You're going to need some blue tack for this. Also, some kitchen towel and window cleaner. Uh, it's best to use wipes if you can get it. I'm just using this for the purpose of the video to show you. Um, also, let's get rid of some of these things and I'll show you what it's all used for. And it's for this. A fish tank. Now you're probably wondering what the hell I'm on about, but stay with me. Um, you can pick these little starter fish tanks up for about 20, 25 pounds, I think. Um, but it's basically a ginormous GoPro. So let's show you how I do it. Put a bit of blue tack, get a little bit of, see if you can see me through there, sorry. Get a little bit of blue tack there. There's a little blue tack. And you stick it on the base of your camera, anyway, you can stick it either end, in the middle, in whatever, just as long as it's on the bottom. And the reason I'm doing that is I can rest my camera in there. And the blue tack will just, I'll probably pull it either side just to make it more stable, but it's to stop it moving about and sliding around as you're putting the fish tank on top of the water. Once again, make sure you've got, if you can, these little um, shoes or stands for your flash guns. They normally come with your flash guns. Uh, put a bit of blue tack. I don't know if you can see, sorry, because this is in the way, but you can put a bit of blue tack on the bottom of uh, the stand of the camera. Put these either side in there, and these will be triggered by my Yongyo 560TX, a full flawless system I found is very good um, also you put your cable release attach it to your camera in there and then as I pick up the fish tank I'd have my thumb on the cable release and I'll be able to press it when you put the um, fish tank on the water it will float a little bit as well uh, I've got some gaffer tape and it shows me um, but looking because you're looking down on the camera, not through it, so you'll be able to see roughly where you want the lens. So I've used these two gaffer tapes as guides in the water. Um, that's it, I'll just fold it over so you can see it. There we go, so they're all pressed up against the glass. So there we go, the two flash guns and uh, the camera's uh, pressed against the glass to minimize reflections of the glass. A polarizer also to cut down reflections on the water. Um, for power and stuff, let's just get rid of this quickly. So there's the flash gun, oh, sorry, the camera, and the flash gun, so you can see this. So first of all, what I'll do is I'll take a picture 
uh, just hand holding just above the water and I get in and I um, test my settings now what I would do is I'd want um, as much depth of field as possible because uh, what we're going to use an ultra wide angle lens and I'm using this at 10 millimeter I've got the Sigma 1020 at 10 millimeter I'm going to focus on the closest distance I can for this lens which is 0 0.24 uh, meters or 0 0.8 feet I don't know if you can see that there on the window of the lens. I'd use that to focus as close as possible because um, we're going to entice the wildlife up right up to the lens. But your camera's going to be protected by the fish tank, which is the great thing. So, but because I'm going to be sort of freestyling it and not looking through the camera, I'm just going to be doing it by fill. So I want as much depth of field as possible. Um, so I'm going to be looking at around f7.1, f9, f11, um, depending on the conditions you know how bright it is because i need to keep my sync speed uh 250th of a second for this camera to make sure that the flash guns work uh, at the sync speed these flash guns will be set at their lowest power 128th um, and their widest zoom setting to spread that light and um, the good thing about 128th of a second is i'm going to get fast recycle times and the batteries are going to last a long time so i don't have to worry about that at all these are just basically a little bit of fill flash for the subject in front. I'm going to try and underexpose uh, the picture as well to let the flash guns do their work and make the subject pop. Um, so, you know, if, if, if I need it a bit darker and I'm at f7.1, I'm just going to drop it down to f.8 or f.9 and just keep going down the apertures until uh, I get the right exposure. And the ISO, I'm probably looking around, I like around ISO 400. You're not going to get any grain and it just makes the camera do a little bit more work and it takes the, the you know, some of the workload off your flash guns. Um, so yeah, don't forget you need your window lean and that, and that's going to clean your fish tank and plenty of kitchen towel because you're going to need to dry it off. Because what I found, I had loads of shots ruined where the swans come over and eat the food because obviously you're going to bait them. Um, you know, they're going to come right over to uh, your fish tank and little droplets keep getting on the fr front of the fish tank without you realising it, you, but you have to keep taking it out and then wiping it down. So yeah, once you've um, set all your settings in your camera from looking through your eye, you know, down on the pond, you know, low down, just put it in between the flash guns in the fish tank and you're ready to go. And then that's it really. So let's get out and go into the field and get some pictures from wildlife. See you in a second. All right, so here I'm at a local duck pond. So I've got some sweet corn because you'd never feed uh, ducks or geese bread because uh, they will eventually swell up and explode. Um, here I my fish tank. I'm just going to lower it in the water and lure them in with um, sweet corn, but um, they're a bit wary today, so it might not work. But I'm just going to show you the, the principle of it. I'm just going to set up my camera, just take a test shot. I'm going to up the ISO to 400 so I can keep that shutter speed. Make sure I've got reflections on the water with my polarizer. Yeah, it's a bit too bright, so there we go. So what I'm going to do right, just going to plug in my cable release. That's it. So. What we do is just want to lure basically we're just going to lure the ducks and the geese near so what i do is i'd lower the fish tank in there we go and then i'd have the cable release and then i'd press the shutter button now, my normal spot is over the other side of the pond there where there's a little slope into the water and it's a lot easier but here it's a lot harder because um i'm a lot higher than the ducks so they're a bit wary and plus obviously uh, swans are a lot more confident as well uh, as you can see they've all sort of gone away now but this is the principle of it 
Um, it's uh, a lot of perseverance, a lot of hard work, but you can get some amazing sh shots as I showed you early, earlier in the video. So I'm just filming what it's like from the fish tank. Uh, you might think, why not just use a GoPro and make life easier? But with a DSLR and a fish tank, I've got so much control over my settings as well. And I can darken the scene down and use the flash guns, which is the most important part, to make the subject pop in the foreground. Now, with such a shallow depth of field, I've got it set at 0.24, I think that's uh, meters, the closest uh, focusing range. So you really need them basically almost touching the lens. Uh, because they're any further away, then they're just gonna be, everything's gonna be out of focus. So yeah, so when you get them really close, you're gonna get some really quirky wide angle shots. Unfortunately, it's not working today. Um, like I say, swans are a better subject, but this is the principle, then you just move it around, use your um, guides, the tape, to dip your lens higher and lower in the water and just take random shots. Sometimes I'll just push it down and tip uh, the camera right back to get a lot of sky in the shot. But uh, like I said, they're a little bit wary at the moment. Um, which is a bit unfortunate. And obviously having such a big dip in there is causing me a lot of problems, but I just, at the moment, just wanted to show you the principle behind uh, my shots and how I get these uh, quirky wide angle wildlife shots. So I, I might try some more, see if I can uh, get some more footage for you and um, some pictures and we'll see how it goes. So let's just uh, throw some sweet corn. Right, so today didn't go exactly as I planned. Um, the geese and the ducks were just very wary of me. Like I say, swans are definitely more confident if they're hungry, they will come right up to the fish tank. Um, I didn't get any shots today, but that's the beauty about photography, it's about perseverance and trying again. So this car go past. Yeah, it's about, you know, trying again and again, going back to the same place and getting your pictures. As you've seen from the pictures I posted in this video, you can get some very amazing, quirky pictures. You don't need a 100 to 500 millimeter lens. You can get away with a wide angled lens, get some quirky shots, even your kit lens. Okay, um, one thing I say, people might be a bit worried about using flash guns, um, but don't worry about using the flash guns. Use it on the lowest power. Just take a few shots. Don't overdo it. Um, and it's not going to bother the birds because you know, if the birds are worried about you using flash guns, they're gonna let you know somehow. Mm, seagull. Right, cut, cut. 